Hi Floss Tube, it's Karen, Recovering Monogamous Stitcher. I'm back with Floss Tube number 44. I'm recording this on Friday, May 10, 2024. And I have so much to share with you. Um, it's been a great two weeks and uh, just tons of stuff to talk about. Uh, if you're back and are a subscriber, I appreciate it so much. Thank you for coming back. I appreciate knowing that you enjoy what you see and that you're willing to come back when there's so many floss tubers out there and so much eye candy to see. I really appreciate it. If you're new here and just stumbled on my channel, you're so welcome. I hope you see something you enjoy and that you will like and subscribe and become part of my virtual stitching family. Thank you so much. Well, uh, the last video, I brought up the topic that Nicola had discussed in her videos um, <clears throat> about whether we should put our names or initials or the year we actually stitched a sampler. If we're doing a reproduction sampler, how are we handling that? And I got some really interesting feedback and I'll share that with you. <clears throat> and I have decided from this point on, as I look at all the things I have on my walls, I don't necessarily have my, even if they're not reproduction, I didn't necessarily put my initials in them, and I, I think I should have. But so, moving forward, I'm going to be finding a way to get my name and the year I stitched the piece on it, uh, not hidden behind the frame, which I had thought I would do at first. Okay, so several people mentioned that what they do to mark theirs as their own work is that they find a thread that matches the background color that they're stitching on, and then it's very unobtrusive. They can put their initials, the year they stitched, you know, which is visible to a close examination, but it doesn't detract from the design. I thought that was a great idea, just great. Um, Janet said she always adds her initials and the date that she stitched, and usually, and she does it usually backstitched near the bottom or the right-hand corner. <clears throat> Jeanette, oh, I'm sorry, I've got floss tube through it again already. Jeanette uh, says she always includes her initials and the date. Liz in Florida says she always includes her birth name in the samplers and says that a true reproduction is true to the antique. And that is that is true. So I'm, I have done backstitched initials sometimes. Sometimes um, in, in the alphabet, if it's not a reproduction, but it's a sampler, you know, maybe a, a modern designed, but it's a sampler style. My initials, KLM, are in the alphabet, and so if I can, if they're on the same line, they're not split up on two different lines, I just do those three initials in a different color or the same color together or something that's um, I've marked in that way. I've done back stitches of the year on some of my pieces, but again, I've not been consistent, just like with my quilts. I've come to, I, I guess, maybe the older I get and the closer to the end I get, I think, uh, my kids are not going to know where these came from. They won't know that was that quilt was made by grandma. I've got to get those labeled. And so um, I, I'm going to start labeling all my stitches and get into my quilt closet and make sure that everything has the information on it. Even if I, you know, write a label and say, this was made by, you know, this person around this date, uh, as close as I can remember. You know, I remember she did it when I was a child or whatever. So I think labeling and dating is important. That's that discussion. Now, um, my stitchy friends who I've never met, Jeannie and Leanne at Loose Threads, uh, Leanne was talking about how, how to have um, a way to get to, to all the things she has. You know, she needs, she feels badly that she doesn't get back to things. She gets them started, gets them going, and doesn't get back to them. Well, you know, my system is that I have a focus piece and it's always my oldest whip. And that's because I keep track of that. I'm interested in knowing that. I, I, that's what is important to me. So I keep track of it. And, but some people don't keep track of it. Um, but so to Leanne, I would say, try to identify what is the thing that's bothering you. Is it that you have too many whips? Is it that you don't get to start new things? Is it that you don't get big projects done? Um, you know, is it that, um, I can't remember, I, have, I wrote down several ideas, but um, identify what's bothering you and then make a plan that'll attack that. Now, you know, I have my focus piece, that's my oldest whip, but if you don't pay attention to the oldest or newest, then 
that wouldn't work for you. Sarah, Stitchy, Sarah at Sarah's Stitchy Spot has taken the idea of a focus piece and she uses it for something that she really wants to get done. So if there's something that, oh, you just really want to get done, good, make it your focus. Do seven days, or in your video you had said you might do 10 days, that's great, do that. You will be amazed at the progress you'll make. You know, over one or two months where you've dedicated some time to it, you, you will find that you'll get something done that you really want to get done. Um, another person I would refer you to is Lori at Once Upon a Stitch. She has a rotation plan. I think she usually does two days stitching rotation. And she gets through all of her things and she gets a lot of things done. So, so Leanne, I wish we could just sit down over a cup of coffee and talk stitching. That would be so much fun. But if it's bothering you, see if you can identify what's bothering you and make a little plan. And it, you do it for a while. If it doesn't work for you, do something else. Um, and then again, if you're happy with what you're doing, you have no reason to make a plan. So, so thanks for indulging me in that. I really wanted to have a conversation with Leanne about that issue. Uh, okay, FFOs. I told you last time that I had taken uh, five items to the framer and they're back and I'm ready to share. I spent, I think, a couple half days pinning and lacing the pieces. Um, and they all went to Hobby Lobby because that's the choice I have here. So the first one I'm going to show is Maria, famous Maria, Maria Vincenza Lavicchia with the flying monkeys. <laughs> yeah, the frame, I love that frame. It has a little um, pattern at the outside. Can you see? Oh, there you can see it. It's not really a solid, solid black. It kind of has some brown looked in it in it but it looks really good next to um well i did seven alphabet sampler and that's up I, i'll talk about what i have hanging up anyway in a little bit but so she's beautiful she's done she was a challenge because all of these different um uh, what do you call it? border designs aren't the same they aren't the same stitching height they don't end in the same spot you can see this you know, they overlap or, so it was a challenge for the framer and I to figure out, you know, how to measure it and um, get it framed right. But I'm very happy with the way it turned out. So that is Maria Larica, Larikia, Vincenza Larikia. <laughs> okay, it's Maria. Here she is. She's done. And she's hanging on my wall proudly. Okay, I'm going to have to slide in and out here. Sorry. Okay, next one, Jane Parson. This is from The Wishing Thorn. Oh, I forgot to say Maria is from Hands Across the Sea. Jane Parson from The Wishing Thorn. Um, let me get to my note here. Jane Parson stitched on 28 count clay. I don't usually stitch on 28 count. And I used the Ginny Thompson flower thread and it gave beautiful coverage on 28 count one strand. I love it. I love the soft colors. Um, that color palette is different for me um, than many of the other things I have and I just love it. And I did uh, send Birgit a picture of this finished and framed. And this frame has a, a little black, I don't know, inset or fillet. It was part of the frame. It wasn't a separate piece, but I think it just really sets it off nicely. Jane Parson from The Stitching Thorn. The Wishing Thorn. Okay, you have to ignore what I say. You have to know what I mean. <laughs> the next one, Red Deer. Red Deer Sampler from GGR. I stitched Red Deer on 36 count gray from Weeks Dye Works. And the, I used a combination of over dyed threads and DMC threads. Um, and I made the decision based on what I happened to have in my stash and um, what I, of the overdyes I didn't have, I filled in with uh, DMC alternates. And I, I really still laugh at myself that I did not recognize that this is a Dutch name. I thought they were random letters, and, and then some, one of my viewers said, that's a Dutch name. I grew up in West Michigan. I, how could I not recognize a Dutch name when I see it? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Red Deer Sampler, beautiful, love it. The frame has a little bit of red to it, and then the gold. 
and I, I really like that it's not huge and deep. Of course, this could have been an insert inside a bigger frame, but I, I liked the size of this um, with this piece. And this is hanging in our living room upstairs. We have a red accent wall and red deer is hanging on that wall. Okay. Oh, GGR, sorry, is the designer. Okay. Next one. Strawberry bird. I love how this frame picks up the greens in that. This is stitched with all DMC. This is from the Blue Flower. It's called Strawberry Bird. I stitched it on platinum, not over dyed. Uh, what was the 40 count? And I used all DMC floss, which is what it called for. I think it's just beautiful. The only change I made was inside the leaves. I switched out the, the color of green because there was not enough contrast for that to show. So I just switched to a, a lighter DMC green so that those details would show. Very happy with this. I have to send a picture of this to Janine. Uh, and this is going to my daughter when I get um, my pile of Prairie Schooler Santas <laughs> uh, made into ornaments, then I'll be sending a box to her, so. Blue, the blue flower. Strawberry bird. And number five, Dancer. Dancer by Barbara Anna. This was published in the PNPS Magazine, Christmas Winter 2022, I believe. It's stitched on 32 count Lugana called Basalt Splash. All DMC flosses were called for. I love the way this, this is a new um, at, at uh, Hobby Lobby and it just picks up that orange in the uh, turtleneck and I love it. And we went with square. Um, the picture on the front of the pattern um, was finished in a round embroidery hoop. I thought about round, but they don't do round at, at Hobby Lobby. I didn't find a standard that I really liked anyway. And when I saw this color, that's what I decided I wanted. And we decided to go with square rather than rectangular for the shape. Just thought it, it showed more of the, um, the splash instead of having that all cut off, so. Very happy with this, this is Dancer. Okay. Okay, those are my five new pieces. Uh, let's see, oh, I'm, I'm going to move on to my whips, the things I've stitched in the last two weeks. Um, the first one is my focus piece now. It's called Forget Me Not. And I'm using doing the, um, the box Katie Strachan made, um, what was hers called? Can't remember. Something harm simple harmony. Uh, I have the initials all on. Now this is the this is the side that has my great and great great grandmothers on. This is my grandmother. That's my mother. My mother, and that goes all the way over there, maybe 12 for her year. So I finished the letters first so that I could move around any, oops, move around any of these uh, smaller designs to fit with the letters and numbers that I put in. So now I'm working my way back, filling in. I had done outlines, so I'm working on this one. I have three more to finish filling in. And then I'll be done with the sides and I will move on to the back. And that's the last side to do and my information will be on the back and then on the inside lid someone had asked uh, about you know how will people know who these are and on um, my plan is that when the lid lifts up on the inside of that lid I will have the information in order the generations and the, um, the birth year and death year for great great I'm not sure that I even know her birth year but um, so I'll give the information that's that I have that's the plan for that. Okay, the next one I worked on. No, you know what? I said I said modern folk embroidery was my focus. It isn't. The mason jar lineup is my focus. So, sorry. Even I'm confused. 
So I had a genius idea. Uh, last video or the one before, I gave information in my notes about how you can get the PDF for the dimensions kits. And when I got the PDF, it was great, but it, it's two separate ones. So I'm not going to show the chart. But So here's one page of the chart, the back of it. I'm not showing the chart. And then here is whoop, the other page of the chart. And the the pattern charts come together like this. And so this was a PDF and this was a PDF. And I said I had taped my working copies together so that I could negotiate that um, switch from page to page and not mess up. And one of my genius viewers said she taped her working copies together and took a picture with her phone and then put that into good notes. Now, how genius is that? I wish I would have thought of that, but that's that's a great idea for you if you ever find yourself in that situation. So here's Mason Jar lineup. I'm working this way. I've not done the, any of the outlining on this or those flowers that extend out there, but the rest of the outlining is done. I've tried to keep up with it as I go along. For one thing, it's very encouraging to get that uh, back stitching done and see all those details just pop. That's wonderful. Mason Carl. Basin jar lineup. <laughs> I have a disconnect between my brain and my mouth, I think. So there's that one. And the next one I worked on was Little Red Chair Sampler by Scarlet House. This is stitched on 40 count vintage meadow rue. I used all the called for over dies, except I'm using DMC 310 for the black. Now, and I think I told you, I thought I had a mistake. I had done, you know, the, just the bones of it around, and I thought I had made a mistake up in that corner because something, it didn't line up on that side the way it did at the top. And am I glad I took another good close look at the pattern before I started tearing that out because I was sure it was wrong. It was right. So, so I didn't have to tear it out, and thankfully I didn't tear it out. I've done that sometimes, torn something out that I thought was wrong, but it turned out it was right. Uh, yeah. That's no fun. So um, let's see. I've continued to fill on up in the border. I'm trying to, you know, when you count into the middle of nowhere, it gets a little tricky with the counting. So, but there's the bottom. I'm getting there. Not quite halfway. Not quite. That's a sweet little sampler too. Okay, that's Little Red Chair Sampler from Scarlet House. And the next thing I worked on, this is going to all tie into um, the retreat. I'll call it a retreat. I don't know what they called it, um, but with Nicola Parkman came to um, the Cincinnati area um, at the Queen City Sampler Guild, um, sponsored her, and it was wonderful. So I'll, first I'll talk about what I stitched, and then I'll talk about the um, retreat itself. So we were given Margaret Hutton, Hands Across the Sea. Now, Hobbies of Holly. Holly, um, I've got... Holly, twice I've gotten through your video like about as far as you've talked about the retreat and, and I've gotten interrupted, so I haven't finished your video, but I know you've shown this. Uh, so I'm not going to show all the other things that we got uh, because Holly has already shown it. Look, go to her uh, floss tube, Hobbies of Holly. Uh, Margaret Hutton, a Scottish sampler, and um, we were schooled in all the things that define this as a Scottish sampler that to a trained eye, they know immediately that it's a Scottish sampler. I'm learning. <laughs> uh, one thing is the predominance of red and green, um, and then other specialty specialty things, the, the peacocks, crowns, uh, some of the special, I think the curlicues are particularly Scottish too. So we learned specialty stitches, and I want to say them correctly because the names do not just trip off fall trip off my tongue. Nothing trips off my tongue. It stumbles off. Okay, so I worked on this a um, couple days after we got back. I can, I've established the length on the border with the green. I haven't completed the flowers, but for these rows, I wanted to get started so that I practiced the specialties. 
Okay, I had a, I had a pointer. I had a pointer. Okay. So these are regular cross stitches. This row, can you see that alter? It's called alternating back stitch, alternating double back stitch. So we're we're on the front. Oops, you can't see my camera is just a phone. Where it looks solid on the front, it appears uh, as that outline in the back, and and the same is true the other way. So that is definitely reversible. This is rice stitch, which was very fun. That's regular cross stitch, regular cross stitch. Wait, look. No, four-sided stitch. Can't even see it. Four-sided stitch, that ABC, that's four-sided. Um, this red line below it, it was supposed to be Algerian eyelet over two threads. But Nicola said the model stitcher said she had trouble with it and it looked messy. Well, if the model stitcher had it looked messy, I wasn't going to waste my time doing that. So Holly and I decided we would do Smyrna's of over the two. And then this is the Algerian eyelet, and I did get one letter done. And the interesting thing that Nicola said that my quilter's brain finally caught on to she said, you do not want a thread to go across the hole that is formed in the eyelet. So you stitch part of it. You stitch like the outside, 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 and then you work your way back to fill it in. Um, and I'll show you on the quilt. When I show the quilt, I'll show you um, when I do continuous curve. Once my brain caught on to that, I understood what she meant about stitching the Algerian eyelet so that your thread is not crossing over and filling in that, you know, behind that hole. You don't want that to show. So I'll show you that. So those are the um, specialties I've done so far. The um, queen stitch is going to be down here someplace, and I haven't gotten that far yet, so I haven't done that. But what a fun workshop. Um, the sampler is beautiful. Uh, the place was beautiful. Um, it was great. So um, first of all, <clears throat> people who fly in think they're in Cincinnati. Well, they really aren't. They're in northern Kentucky because the Cincinnati airport is in northern Kentucky. So we were not in Cincinnati. We were in Florence, y'all. <laughs> uh, that's what they say on their, uh, it's on their water tower of their town, Florence, y'all. Um, Nicola, what a warm, outgoing person. Uh, just so genuine. When, um, People were checking in, some were sitting in the lobby area and pe other people were checking in. She was out there talking with everyone. She went around and spoke with everyone. Uh, the morning of, of the retreat, when we were lined up waiting to go in you know, pick up our, our projects and go in the door, she was going down the line talking to everyone and, and, and throughout the whole retreat, she was you know, going around asking, if, do you have any questions? Can I help you with something? Just. She was so wonderful. She come. She is as wonderful as she appears to be on her video. Just, um, I would, I would go out of my way to, to attend a, a Nicola event again. That, that's for sure. Uh, the Queen City Sampler Guild. Kudos to them. It was very organized. The space was a good space. The technology was good. They knew what they were doing. It was wonderful. Um, and then the wonderful stitchers I met. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm not gonna cry. Holly, Hobby Zavali, Barry, Grace, um, and Kay. There were five of us? Anyway, I hardly got to talk to Kay because she was at the other end of the table, but such nice people, so much fun. Um, oh, my new friends from Alabama, Roll Tide, my three, my three Alabama friends. Um, I saw Carrie, Tiger Lily, I met Shelly the first time, Antique Needleworkers, Shelly. Um, got to speak with Karen Combs. I took a, um, an online quilting class with Karen Combs through Craftsy, so that was fun to get to talk to her and see her. Uh, and there were so many there who said they enjoyed my floss tubes. It was just so wonderful. It was, it was a wonderful experience. And it was not overwhelming. I mean, there were maybe 100, just over 100 people in the room. 
it was a nice size. Um, it, it was a wonderful retreat. I would, I would highly recommend if you can get to a retreat like that. That's you know easy to say because I you know so many of them are happening that I can't go to, and I just oh, it would be wonderful to go. Now, like I said, Holly showed you um, the things that we got from um, from Nicola and from the guild, and one thing we got specifically from Nicola is this pattern, Honora, what's her name? Maxwell. And when she gave this out, I said to Holly, I have a pad, a hats pattern that has, the, the girl has the first name of Lenora. And I got home and that's exactly what I already had. So, <laughs> viewers, um, this, my additional one will be a, a giveaway in the future. So, but it's a sweet little sampler. This girl from Brooklyn. Um, and, and Nicola just has such a wonderful presentation about it, you know, the, the, the history of the girl and so forth. And it's just, oh, so wonderful. So that'll be a giveaway. Ah, that's my talk about the retreat. Okay, I don't have any fully finished stitches this time. I spent time, um, the day I picked my pictures up from the framer, I spent time um, hanging pictures. Um, other ones I hadn't, hung in a permanent place yet because I didn't want to put a nail in the wall and then have to move it when I, as I got more and more. So I wanted to get enough so I could, you know, put them in a space. So that took part of, you know, picking them up and then laying them out, planning and getting the hardware and getting those up. So I spent time doing that. I also spent some time um, reorganizing my patterns and my fabric. Um, I'm going to talk to you about that. So I had, I have, oops, three containers like this. They fold flat, uh, you know, unless they're full. So, and I got these at my Meyer, my local Meyer store. If you're from the Midwest, you know Meyer. Um, and so I had three of these, and I used those <clears throat> for my patterns. One of them was strictly for Blackbird, and then the other one had all the others. And then I had, I have two, oops, two units like this. And this I had started out storing my fabric in. So I had 40 count, 36, 32. And then I have another one. I think I had a 14 Ada, 16 and 18 Ada and Lugana or something like that. But 40 count is my go-to fabric. And this drawer I couldn't even close it. Well, the 40 count and 36, I couldn't even close them. So <laughs> I was putting the pieces into a third one of these. And, you know, they didn't stand up. They flopped down, and I couldn't see what I had, and it wasn't very helpful. So first thing I did was I have, um, I got a two-drawer filing cabinet, and all my patterns are now in the filing cabinet. They're arranged pretty much the way they were when they were in these um, boxes. But I think, well, for one thing, it'll give me more room on my shelf, so I think it'll help in that way too. So I have Blackbird in a section, and then I have it subdivided like um, the samplers, if they're a separate sampler pattern. The books are in a section, um, but I also have uh, like holiday, the Halloween section and Christmas section, and, and, and then I have my completed Blackbirds because I keep all of my patterns. I don't give them away. So that's the Blackbird section. Um, the next section is Hands Across the Sea. Um, and there aren't particularly a lot of them in that file cabinet because most of them are kitted and they're in my kit basket waiting for me to start. So I have a section for Hands Across the Sea and the completed Hands Across the Sea. And the bottom drawer is everything else. And they're arranged, I don't do them by designer, or I have them by themes, or I have them um, winter, spring, summer, fall. I have specific um, holidays, I have Halloween, I have Christmas, Valentine's. Um, I have a section of smalls, freebies, smalls, you know, you get all those freebies, and then when you wanna do a small for a smallest exchange, I have those in a section. I have um, a section that's uh, other finishes, like finished like a strawberry, a biscornu, a pear, uh, a drum. Those things are all together. Um, and, and I have Prairie Schooler as a separate section and the completed 
all my completed, no, that's not right, completed prairie schooler, because I started out with a lot of prairie schoolers, so the completed prairie, prairie schooler are together, and then all my other completed patterns are together. Uh, so that that's quite a bit, but as I say, I keep my patterns. I don't give them away. Um, you know, maybe some archaeologists will be digging in my house someday and wanting to know what I did. So, so that's so the patterns are in a two drawer file cabinet, and I have lots of hanging f folders. Um, you know, when I retired from the university, I had hanging folders and files for each of the classes I taught for week one, week two, week three, whatever it was, and, and then for all the classes and the graduate classes and undergraduate classes. I have more hanging folders and file folders than I'll ever need. So it was not a problem to put everything in nice hanging folders so they're all nicely suspended. They're not scrunched down in the drawer. So, okay, that took care of the patterns. That emptied these three units. I don't know if they're called a box or what they're called. So I ordered from Amazon. Well, first of all, <clears throat> um, the Central Kentucky Stitchers group, we had had a discussion about fabrics and how do you store your fabrics. And, and there was talk about how it's bad to have them kept in plastic. Well, I was in a fabric club and they came in plastic. Uh, I did unseal them though. So, so the plastic was open, but they were in plastic. I was thinking dust. I didn't want them to be dusty. So they were all flopped in this box. So I ordered from Amazon, I ordered comic book board. I got a package of 100. I think I've probably used about half of them. Um, and Judy, JBW Designs, always uses comic board cardboard because it's easily cut with scissors when she's doing her, her pieces. And then she can glue two together or three, I guess, if she wants. Um, so I have plenty for that. And I had plenty for my fabric so far. So. I used that, and I also ordered from Amazon these plastic clips. You see those? They, you kind of get those, sometimes they come on clothing, you know, where things are folded and they're clipped in there. So that's what these are. This came as a package of 300, so I had plenty of those. So I did, this This box is my 40 count. I arranged it to my eye, light to dark, and colors. And it's all 40 count. As I said, all 40 count. So this is what I did. I'm just pulling out here. Okay, I wrapped it around the comic board and used the clips to hold it and I made sure I had my label attached to a salvage. So everything's labeled um, and they stand up. They're not flopping all over. Uh, and actually this container is full. <laughs> it, it's full, oops, I'm catching on, a, on something, putting this back in. It was easy when I did it one at a time. Okay, there, now. And at the very back, I have the pieces. These are all fat quarters. And these are pieces left over from projects. I trimmed it off before I framed, or um, I had a fat quarter, or I did a sampler, and there was a part, of a part of a piece of fabric left. I put all of those, I put a cardboard in, so it'll stand up in a bag, open at the top. So if I need for ornaments, or for smalls, or a small sampler, I have these together and I can look at these. And these, again, all 40 count. So that's what I decided to do. And then I have another um, the, uh, another tub that is my 36, 32. I, and then I have the third tub, which is not nearly as full. This is the most full. Um, and then I have another tub that has my Ada's and Lugana. I don't have so much Ada, actually. No, I don't have so much Ada. Not that I'm against using Ada. I still use Ada. So, so anyway, I have that organized. So I feel good that this is organized. I can see the colors I have without digging and pawing through. I feel good that they're not in plastic. Even though they were open plastic, they're not in plastic. So that solved at this point. I'll see if this works better. But I've solved my pattern and fabric issue. And then, so now I have two of these units that are empty. And I'm thinking about my silks. And uh, I, I checked my, whoops, you know those boxes that, um, the dollar store boxes that the Ginny Thompson flower thread fits in? They fit in these drawers. So I, 
I have to organize my floss next. Um, I have my DMC in plastic boxes on bobbins. I bobbinate. And I have four boxes that are really full. Every, and some of the samplers I'm doing lately uh, might call for 40 colors, 30 colors. Well, many of those are new to my collection, so I have to, you know, have a space for another bobbin, and they've gotten really full. So I bought two additional boxes now. I'm going to redo them so that I'll have, you know, maybe only a range of 300, 300 numbers, like from zero to 299 or something, and then 300 to, I don't know. I'll have to see how they lay out. Um, so I need to have more room there. I'm going to do that. So um, my over dies, I've copied Vanna's method. She shares that freely on her um, website, how she organizes her floss. As I said, I have a lot of hanging file folders. So, you know, I've cut them and put the holes in and I have them marked with the letter. Now she has a box for each manufacturer. I don't have that many. So mine are just in one box and they're alphabetical and I can look them up that way. But I do have some silks in there um, in, in the floss away bags because I didn't have any system to organize my silks. So I think silks will go in the, the little slidey drawer thing too. So I'll, I can put my silks, my flower, um, my flower threads in there. Hope I can come up with some kind of uh, good organization for threads. So that's what I'm trying to do to get a handle on <laughs> all the stuff I have. Um, let's see, what else was I going to talk about? Yeah, so that, that, all that was to say I spent a couple days organizing fabrics and patterns. So I have a little bit of haul. Um, I, on Fat Quarter Club, I joined the <clears throat> Weeks Dye Works Floss Club and the Classic Color Works Floss Club, Club, and I just got my first one because I didn't sign up for it until after I was back from Florida. I didn't want any shipping issue. So I have received my first Weeks Dye Works shipment on that and color, classic color works is coming. From Country Sampler, I bought the Spring Green Pears as a kit. They include the fabric to use with it. They're so cute. I'm anxious to do some pears. Um, There's so many around. I've seen the Erica Michaels patterns and think, oh, they're lovely, they're lovely, and there are a lot of free ones online, and I have those too. I just haven't made a pair yet, so. So that is something I bought. And then after um, the Nicola, I'll call it a retreat, it really was classes, but she said, okay, this I think this one is relatively new, Georgiana Caroline Williams, Williams. And it's a monochromatic. And she mentioned that it would be a great companion for Jane Campion because they're virtually the same size, only the difference of couple stitches. So I have purchased the PDFs. Um, I have my order ready for for the 103s and um, they're going to be in the lineup. What, I've skipped some things I was going to tell you and I don't know what did I tell you? What did I miss? Oh, I know. I was going to show you my book of days. Not that I do a lot. I don't do a lot of stickers and things in my book of days, but I did, when I put in my extra pages, I put in a section for retreats. Now, I don't have permission to show people's pictures, but here are um, some of the people I met at the retreat. And I've got another couple here, and I use my sprocket to print out the pictures. And, you know, special um, talents were displayed that I won't show close up of, but anyway. Anyway, that was so much fun. Now, let me look at my list here. I had things to tell you before we go on to the quilt. Okay, I think I did. Um, where are the bows? Okay, my haul plans. Okay, I have a stitchy day coming up, up in-person stitching day with uh, Central Kentucky Stitchers. I'm looking forward to that because I've been gone all winter. So it'll be great to see them in person again. And I think that's all of my stitchy, stitchy stuff. So I'm ready to talk about the quilt. And I will show you what I mean about the path to go around the outside and not cross. And I'll, maybe I can show this too. Oh, anyway, keep this, keep this handy. Okay, 
Alrighty, I'm going to go to the quilt. Okay, I'm gonna move the camera. So if you get queasy, you wanna look away. Okay. This quilt is called Red and Cream Block of the Month from Fig Tree Quilts, the designer Joanna Figueroa. Now it was not a kit of fabrics, and I know that because I have some fig tree quilt fabric in there, but I know I have fabric from other lines because I recognize, for one thing, I made Christmas quilts for my, oops, for my three grandkids, and I see this fabric in here, and I know that that's not a Figueroa fabric, so I know I was pulling together fabrics. So anyway, it was a um, block of the month, Joanna Figueroa, I'll give you a close-up look of my quilting and then I'll show you the stitch path thing okay so let's see now I can't see what you're seeing can you see the border my favorite piano key border now if I were to do that again I would do it closer together I would make it that looks like an inch I would do half inch if I were to do it again I would not leave the strip unquilted Anything an inch wide, I would be quilting that. I did the sides and left that. I like things more quilted now than I, I, than I knew to do at that time. And I cannot remember the name of all the blocks. This looks sort of like bear paw, but I don't think it's really called bear paw. I can't remember the names. You'll see some... Uh, fig tree quilt fabrics in there, but not all. And then I played a lot with the quilting. Of course, I experimented with doing some straight ruler and then the um, figure eights. Am I pointing at what you're seeing? I hope. Um, lots of feathers. Again, the figure eights. Or feathers, I love feathers. Can you tell? I love feathers. Did feathers here, feathers there. Zhuzhed up, continuous curve. More feathers, feathers, feathers. Feathers in the center of the star. Little fancy smancy. These folds have gotten in here quite a bit. Um, this has been folded on the quilt rack that's in the family room where we have the lap quilts. And I do not refold as they should be done. Every couple months, quilts should be refolded so folds do not get pressed in. But I'm, I don't know, I don't know. You know, it's do as I say, not as I do. Okay, more feathers. And I like experiment on these um, sampler kind of things, I like experimenting with different, uh, Quilting designs. So this design with um, ruler work and then the, the fill in with the figure eights was repeated every place that piece appeared. Uh, where else did I see it? Over here and there. Wherever that piece appeared, I repeated that same quilting design. So it's a lap quilt. In my estimation, it's a lap quilt. I finished it in 2018, so I'm assuming that is the year that the block of the month occurred. And as I say, it was not a kit. I think I must, well, either I had some in my stash or I bought a bundle and then added my own reds with it. So, okay, I want to show you what I was talking about, whoops, with path. Let me see if I can show you. Okay. Now, how am I going to show you the, okay. Okay, with the Algerian eyelet, Nicola said, you don't want your thread to show in the hole. So you she she do the outsides, outsides, you know, like you're doing half of it, outsides and then you're coming back. Now that did not 
click in my brain until I remembered continuous curve on the quilt. Now I'm gonna to try to make sure you can still see. So I start up in a corner here, and I think of this as a house. I do the ceiling and the wall. That brings me down to the next house. I do a ceiling and a wall, and I'm gonna go back and finish that, so that's all I'm doing. And that point brings me to this intersection, which gets me over here. So I, come, I do a ceiling and do both sides of the wall, the wall, the wall, do a ceiling, and now I can get to these two. So I do a wall, a ceiling, a wall, a ceiling. Now I'm gonna finish these because I'm not coming back. Wall, floor, wall, floor, and I'm back where I was. And now I'm gonna go down here because I have to get these. So I'm coming down here, but as long as I'm here, I'm gonna catch these two. Come down here, and you're thinking of where you're gonna go and whoops, how you're gonna get back. So I'm doing ceiling, wall, ceiling, wall, floor, wall, floor, wall. Now I'm back up here and I can finish this and get over to this side. So I do a floor, and I'm gonna catch these walls, both sides of the walls while I'm here. Do this floor, and now I can get down here. Wall, floor, wall, floor, wall, ceiling, wall, ceiling, and I'm back up here. Come up here, catch this. If I didn't do this the first time, I'll catch that before I move. Then I come back here to this corner, and I've already done that. So I go floor, wall, floor, wall, and I've done all of the continuous curve in that. Now that's what she's talking about. Let's see here. Now I can't see what you're seeing. Can I show you? Probably not. Oh, this is not gonna work, I can't show you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought I could show you where the path on the Algerian islet, but, um, but anyway, if you think about it that way, that you, you, you don't want to cross over, you're doing part of it and part of it and part of it, and when you get to one that sticks out at the top and you're not gonna revisit, finish that one, then go do part of it, part of it, do something that you're gonna finish, and then when you're coming back, you're finishing the other half of the Algerian islet. Um, it, it took a while for my brain to get that, but I got it now, and I, I did the letter A, and it worked just the way I thought it should, just like it would for a continuous curve, so. Okay, Floss Tube, that's all I have for today. Um, it seemed like a lot to me, I, I was, Again, zipping through, I always zip through. Um, so it was fun having you with me. I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks and have happy stitching. Bye-bye.